a point just about the way the president talks about manufacturing. I think based on my Twitter feed responses and the conversation um, this morning so far, I think that the, the, the manufacturing that the president is talking about is very different from how I think many Americans think of manufacturing. The president isn't talking about widgets and assembly lines. That's not, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not inside his head, but I'm fairly certain based on knowing kind of how people are talking about job creation and manufacturing in the policy world, he's talking about advanced manufacturing, which is really about robotics. It's about high-tech computing. It's a very high-skill, high-tech future. And I think uh, whether it's you know, a problem or not that he didn't make that clear. I think it's worth putting out there in terms of thinking about what his vision is all about. It's not a sort of looking backwards towards, you know, our, our assembly line age. It really still is in keeping in some ways with the Clinton knowledge economy, but with sort of some more substance um, to it. I'd also say that the Wonka sphere, including, you know, the, the first panel, um, have given Obama some, some flack for industrial policy. Um, I don't have a, a firm position on this, but I would point out that in a sense we do have an industrial policy right now. It's just incentivizing things that don't make much sense. And so we have some options in terms of what we do. And I think the way the president's framed it is essentially saying, well, why don't we change those incentives to make some sense? You could argue that the right thing to do is just to completely remove what we've got in place now and have a real free market driven policy. But I would argue that the status quo isn't, isn't nothing. We've got a status quo in place that's incentivizing things kind of backward. Lee backwards. Um, yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's my, my second sort of policy point. Um, a third related point on the, the manufacturing bit is just that I'm, I'm sure many of you in this room have read the New York Times um, Sunday piece about Apple and iPhones um, and more broadly really about the global supply chain and the serious challenges that the U.S. faces in trying to ultimately kind of create this vision of advanced manufacturing as the bedrock for our economic future. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend you do. It's one of the best pieces of reporting um, I've read in a long time. But in some ways, I wish that I'm sure the president read it, and I'm sure he just decided that he was going to punt and ignore it. But having read that piece and then listening to the speech, there's a big gap between the president's rhetoric and what we face in terms of challenges. And, and I'm glad it's not my job to, to figure out what to do about that gap, but I, I wish the president had, had addressed that a little bit more directly because um, so he skated over a lot there. Um, two other economic policy politics points. The first, on job training, I was heartened to hear the president mention it. Um, I was not happy to see it as usual, kind of skated over. It surprised me over and over and over again over the course of the recession and the recovery how minimal um, a role and how quiet the conversation has been about job training given we have a long history of very confused and not particularly effective job training in this country and it seems like we have this kind of political moment to really think hard about what to do and we keep on not doing it, punting. And I, So I was glad to see the president mentioning it but I, I, I don't feel like it was a particularly serious mention. There are 5.6 million long-term unemployed Americans today and Obama proposes retraining program that would you know, the way he pitches it is this ambitious two million workers retrained. That seems to me to be a serious gap. Obviously, the, the entirety of those 5.6 5, 6 million, 5. 6 million long-term unemployed Americans don't need to be retrained, but at the same time, a two million person retraining program strikes me as, as sort of an unambitious goal given the opportunity for really thinking hard about that. Um, and lastly, on the same theme of labor market issues, uh, Bill mentioned in his opening remarks that say to the states of the union and other addresses are just as important for what they say as what they don't say. The president made no mention of unemployed Americans or jobless Americans. He made a push, a very clear and admirable push for extending the payroll tax cut. He mentioned nothing about extending unemployment benefits, which will expire. Um, and given the number of long-term unemployed, it seems reasonable, and the level of the unemployment rate at this point as well, it seems reasonable to think that our existing federal extension of, of unemployment benefits is something that um, should stick around. Most economists agree that it's, it's good policy for a variety of reasons. Most economists agree that it's significantly better policy than the payroll tax cut from an economic perspective. From a political perspective, it's quite obvious why the president would push the payroll tax cut but not mention the unemployment benefits extension. Um, I think it'll be interesting to watch what happens with that.